would they be like complete with their karmic lessons or they're just like no we're not doing anything right now we're on vacation watching whatever you're doing yeah the peanut gallery lives they're like um there's nothing really for me to help this life with there's other people other lives who are helping so i'm just going to enjoy the ride okay. i'm a little bored up here in higher self <laughs> now i'll tell you the book that i'm writing right now harness your inner fire um is written by two of my past lives that are channeling through me the primary author doa is a uh 2000 year old buddhist nun i now while she is my past life and i've like seen her in the background we've never really like had any reason to connect um one day i was washing dishes like when you're doing mindless chores it's a great time to have past lives and guides like show up and chat with you because your logical brain is a little occupied um so i was washing dishes and jesus came by and we're chatting um this was like after i'd written the book no when i was writing the book uh the how jesus planned his life um he said, you didn't write it. I wrote it. I'm like, all right. Smart Alec. Um, so um, I said to him, um, did I have any connection with you other than the part that I already know about? And he said, well, yes, you were one of my teachers. Like, you were instrumental. And I said, really? I don't remember that. And he said, well, there was no reason for you to remember it before now. And he called Doa forward and she's this beautiful um like 2300 year old buddhist nun who um she lived in a cave in the himalayas and she was so beautiful she was an elemental you know she worked with elemental energy just beautiful loving happy kind soul and when jesus went on his uh walkabouts and he literally traveled all over the world. Like when people say he was with Native Americans, he was he literally went all over the world. Um, I mean, for him to travel from one place to like teleportation, you know, he learned that pretty quickly. So um, she was one of the beings that he joined with for lessons that he needed. Um, because when he returned to... Um, to Jerusalem and um, uh, was teaching, he was teaching global healing. He was not just teaching any one form. He was teaching from lessons he'd learned from masters all around the world, from every community. While he was studying with people, he was saying, he said to them, when the time comes, a line of energy will come to you. I want you to stake it into the ground and shoot it forward. He was planning for the healing mandala. So uh, Doa was one of the ones that when the energy came to her, um, she energetically staked it in the ground and shot it forward to the next healers all around the world. So it was not just Jesus healing the world. It was Jesus connecting with master healers all over the world. To, to do this. So um, Doa has been with me and I've been writing about her life and what it was that she knew and could do and her lessons that made her a person that, that Yeshua would uh, wish to be with. And she's so funny because she is the direct reincarnation of a 4,000 year old Hindu monk that I had been. This 4,000-year-old Hindu monk, I've known him a long time. He was bad news. Like, like, if this were Harry Potter world, he would have been Voldemort. He was bad. He studied in a Hindu temple, uh, yet he was very arrogant. He was brilliant but arrogant, so he lost all respect for everyone who needed any moment. Like, he had no compassion. And he ended up just becoming like a mafia king. Like, he left the monastery, and he just did, like, bad things and oppressed people. He was just, like, terrible. And he gobbled up people's life energy, and he was always trying to attack the monastery, but he never succeeded. Um, and when he died, he's like, oh, shit. 
I got everything wrong. I failed my life challenge. I was supposed to have compassion and empathy, and instead I like totally went in the other direction. So he spent several thousand years trying to rebalance his karma. It was so bad there was no rebalancing it. So he came back to life again So uh, as Doa. So when she, her first thought, statement to me was, do not hate my brother, my soul brother, for all the bad he did. If he had not lived, I would not, and done all of that, I would not have been born. I was only born to help him balance what he had done. So in this situation, it's not just one aspect of my higher self who came to life. It's one life that said, I need to complete and balance my karma. I am doing it again. And that's that can happen. So uh, just be aware of that, that when you go and do your past life regressions, we'll come up with a lot of interesting stuff. Um, Question. Okay, so you're saying the um, the nun was two thousand years old, and the other guy was four thousand. You mean physically? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um. As you do past life regressions, there's a few things to look for. Uh, sometimes we'll give shards of our soul to someone else, either to tag along with them, to uh, or to help them. So uh, suppose you're coming into life and you're going for something that's going to be a real challenge for you. You might come to me and say, Benita, can you, you're good at this. It's something you've done successfully. Give me a splinter of your soul to help me uh, because I want to do a one and done on this. Or I've already tried this challenge a few times and I'm not getting it. Or I might say to you, oh, you're going to go do this. I'm going to be doing that later. Can I send a splinter of my soul along so when I do it later I'm comfortable with it if you do a past life regression and you only see segments of the life or it's in like sepia tones or like not completely there you can ask was I the primary soul or is this a splinter of me in here and also ask why is this splinter life connecting with me in this life is there part of this you know because maybe then I'm now in the life that the splinter of my soul I sent with her on that life. This is the life now where I'm working on the lesson. So the splinter is trying to get my attention and say, hey, you already got a head up on this. You already did a little studying. So um, when you do the past life regression, however it comes through, accept it and honor it and just be one with it. Don't try to micromanage it. <laughs> I'm telling you, easy to say now when you're in it, you'll be like, oh, you're not doing what I want you to do. Uh, also, you can really only receive what you're open to receive. So if you, um, since you're doing something fairly new, you, it may come in in different ways than what you're expecting. Because you have the frequency of your past life and the frequency of your present life and the conduit of connection that it has to get all the way through. Uh, it's sort of like tuning a radio. So if you allow yourself to be completely open, whatever comes through, don't say, okay, whatever that is, I'm waiting for the big thing. Accept what comes through. It may be a little whispering in the back of your mind. You may hear a, I'm here for you. You're like, well, all I see is black. I'm seeing the inside of my eyelids. I feel shut down. Nothing's coming through. I'm getting a little panic because everyone else is having a regression but me. And I'm hearing some voice in the back of my head, which I think is my own thought. You know, so whatever comes through, say, someone just whispered, I'm here for you. I accept this. I honor it. Thank you. Let's go forward together. You know, or... It, it doesn't just accept what comes through. You may see some swirling colors and you're like, oh, I am seeing swirling colors. I accept this. I honor it. I appreciate it. Let's be one together. You may end up realizing, oh, this was a life I lived when I was in the dimension of purple or in another dimension where everything's just like swirling energy. You're like, oh, okay. 
instead of pushing it aside, waiting for the past life, that was your past life. So you're like, okay, so I'm here with swirling energy. Feel welcome to come into me. Let's see, one, pull me into you. Just be open to it and see what happens. That may be like the elevator ride that takes to, to where you need to go. Uh, sometimes we get a little warm-up act to help us get our frequency where it needs to be for whatever to come through. All right? So whatever comes in, accept it, honor it. We have a whole day. If the first regression, you're like, well, I actually went to a childhood memory, not a past life. That's okay. That childhood memory came up for a reason. It may be warming you up so that you can hit a past life regression on the next one. Okay? Um, when we do a past life regression, we're going to try all different mediums to get there. But it's always with the exact same purpose. There's a traditional past life regression just like the traditional Akashic records thing where it's all about lightening your frequency and opening your senses. So um, traditionally, you go on to a meditation where you're in a place. It might be a garden. It might be you know, a city. It can be anything. You're in a place. And um, like usually uh, the traditional one is you start out in a garden. And you open up all the senses. You smell the flowers. You see all the colors. You know, you look at the plumage. You're on a path in the garden. You feel the heat of the sun on you. You look up. You see the sky. You feel a gentle breeze. You smell the aromas as you keep, you know, and you stimulate all the senses. And you get the person sort of in the place. It doesn't matter if you are actually a visual person and you're seeing it or all you see is black, or all you see is swirling colors. Just be in the garden with whatever senses are opening up. So it can be your mind's eye, even if you are not a visual person. And you might suddenly go, like you hear the birds outside. You're like, oh, okay, so I'm heightening my, and it helps you understand like which of your senses are the most comfortable to open naturally, all right? Um, so I take you forward on the path, and the path becomes a little more like a, a dirt trail and we're in a field of wildflowers and there's deer and bunny rabbits and a hawk goes overhead and we end up in a forest and you know it's very mossy and very healing and we're in the shadows and there's squirrels and chipmunks and you know you see a fox going through like and uh, we're paying attention to the trail, there's roots going through it, and it's really more like a rivulet, you know, uh, dug through that has been well-traveled by animals. Yeah. Like we keep going further and further and further till we get to a cave and we go through the cave and we might go down, we might go up, but you know, we, we get to a place where there's a door. And when you open the door, your past life is waiting for you. So the point of this journey is to get all your senses open and to get you so into the story that you forget to be in your logical head, all right? If you are doing um, a journey that's more for like nature energy, like say you, someone says to me, Benita, I know I was a shaman, a healer in a past life. I really want to connect with that. We're definitely going to go through nature and underground because that's the resonance of that. Or if someone says, Benita, I feel like in past lives I've really been connected with Palladians, with angels. You know, I then we're definitely going to go way up high to the Bardo, the land between time and space, like, you know, to a very high frequency for that connection. Um, the first regression we do, because it'll take a while to get everyone there, uh, we are going to go through a cave but we're going to go up steps in the cave and there will be like glowing crystals and fireflies and stuff. And when we get to, we're going to get to a hallway where there will be doors all the way down the hallway and we will visit several past lives. All right. The way the doors look will let you know what's behind the door. So as you're going down the hallway, um, and some of you may feel like it's an underground 
cave hallway. Some of you may feel like you're in a hallway in a garden. Like, it'll be your hallway. Let it be. Each door, as you approach it, we will feel the door. We will look at the door. If you see a door that looks like the door of a ship, you know, and then you sniff and you smell salt water, you're going to a seafaring life. If you see a door that's all stone columns, you know, you may be going to an ancient Greek or Roman or Tibetan life or something. So there will be things in there. When we go through the door to the light, I'll give you a few things to look around, you know, uh, look at your feet, <clears throat> look around you. What does your body feel like? Are you male or female? Some of you may feel like oh, I'm just flowing energy right now or, oh, I'm a chipmunk in this life. Or, you know, just honor whatever comes through. Sometimes you think that you're a dog, but then as you go forward, you realize, no, I'm not a dog. I was a child pretending I was a dog. You know, so like, you know, honor whatever comes through, even if it makes no sense at the moment. All right. So we'll go through wherever you go through. You might go in as a child. You might go in middle aged. Um, we'll go through and have a few minutes there. And then we're going to move to another moment in time. And then we'll move to another moment in time. You might be going linearly or you might be hopping around like, oh, I come in middle age and now suddenly I'm a child and now I'm back here. Or it may be the next moment in the progress of that moment. So, um, uh, but then we'll go to your death moment. And as your soul leaves your body, I will ask you to ask your, your, your life, what is their final, you know, what is their thoughts about their life? What is their final thoughts? And um, some of you may find as you're going through this, that you are in the body experiencing it as the body. Or you may find you're like watching a movie or like you're in a, a hologram room and you're like floating in the air seeing everything 3D and like like you're the spirit guide for the life. Or you may be there watching the life while the soul of the life is beside you watching and chatting with you. And occasionally the life might turn and chat with you and then go on. So however it comes through, just honor. You may be in another person's body watching your life. And you're like, I'm in the body of the parent of the life I was in, then enjoy that because there may be a lesson to be learned on what the other person was experiencing while you were in that life. Or it may be that life that you're in had a traumatic life, so it's better for you to be in another body while you're watching that life. So whatever goes on, even if it makes no sense, do not try to control it. Just go in for the wild ride. And then as we come out from the third life, you guys will scribble in your notebook, drink a lot of water, and then we'll have a share. Okay? Um, so, anyone have questions? Excellent. Uh, let's take a moment, use restrooms, and then uh, and spread ourselves out. I think we have two, four, six, eight. 17. 17? I think if we stack ourselves like cordwood, <laughs> we can all fit in this room. If any, But if anyone is feeling a little agoraphobic, you can lie in that room. But let's not upset the pyramid. Let's leave it as is. 